So Oliver here on the left playing Lost Box. Uh, to win the game from this scenario, most likely Oliver needs to get the Clara off the prize cards to use Clara to recover either Sableye Energy to KO this Genesect or uh, Oliver could also recover, theoretically recover the Drapion and use Drapion to KO the Mew V or VMAX on the next turn. It would need like an energy attached to it as well. But um, so Oliver like needs the Clara to like lock up this win here potentially. Um, and on this turn, Oliver just used Greninja to KO a Genesect off the bench and draw two prize cards. Now Oliver just took the, just took the Nest Ball from here. So they drew the first prize card for the turn, the Nest Ball. Um, and previously to that, Oliver took a one prize knockout and took this prize card here, which is the Trek and Shoes. And then before that, took a two prize knockout and took these two prize cards. And when Oliver drew their prize cards this game, Oliver went and draw this prize card first, then this prize card for the two prize knockout. When they drew the one prize knockout, though, they actually took the Trekking Shoes from over here and didn't draw this prize that was closest to them. Now, in this, it's a little bit, you can't tell for sure, but in this layout, the prize card that's closest to Oliver is this Colrus. And generally speaking, if you draw your prize cards in order, you're kind of always just taking the prize cards that's closest to you because that's just kind of what makes sense. Why would you go out of your way to draw a prize card that's further away from you than a prize card that's closer to you? That doesn't make any sense logically. So when you draw your drawing prize cards in order means just drawing the prize card that's closest to you. Now, you could have some other predetermined specific way that you draw your prize cards, but drawing your prize cards out of... Um, logical order just looks like you're cheating. Like if you ever draw your prize cards out of logical order, it just looks like you're cheating. Cause why would you ever do that? One of them is closer to you than the rest. It just looks like you're cheating. So don't draw your prize cards out of logical order. Just draw your prize cards in logical order every single game and repeat. Um, so Oliver draw, drawing that trekking shoes, honestly, that looks kind of sus to begin with that Oliver even drew the trekking shoes out of order. That that's, that's just weird, right? Cause the nest ball was here. It was closer to them. And instead Oliver took this prize card, which is further away from them, which makes no sense. Now, when they took the first knockout, they were taking two prize cards, but they did draw them in the order of closest to furthest, not furthest to closest. And then on the one prize knockout, Oliver drew furthest. And then on this last knockout that's happening right now, Oliver used Genesect. 90 on the active, 90 to a bench, or is using the Greninja, 90 on the active Genesect, 90 to a bench Genesect, KO'd the bench Genesect, and took the, the Nest Ball that was right here under the Colrus, which is closer to them, and then they went to the top two prize cards, and then they go to draw the Colrus, um, which is the closest prize card to them, and this is where it gets kind of sus. Can I even go slower than 0.5? I go to 0.25. So Oliver goes for the prize card, goes and grabs, touches the Colrus, and starts to pull it towards them, and it's like it seems like it's a little bit stuck on the glass, so they have to like pick it up over the lip of the glass or whatever it looks like. And then they do that. And it's possible. It's not a hunt. You can't tell for sure that Oliver sees the chorus or not. And that's kind of the problem is you can't tell for sure if Oliver sees the chorus or not. To be honest, the more I've never slowed it down to this speed though. But now that I have slowed it down to this speed, it does kind of look like he sees it. But, in, but at, at that moment where it looks like Oliver could have seen the chorus, Oliver puts the chorus back and then goes and grabs the Clara, which, I mean, that's just sus, right? Like that, there's no other way to put it. It looks terrible for Oliver. Like it looks awful. Um, Yeah, it just looks terrible. It looks like I'm, I'm even if Oliver didn't do that maliciously, um, I'm like, you have to be fine with the, the judges call there to DQ Oliver because like you can only do like, even if you didn't like to cheat, there needs to be intent. So uh, if let's say Oliver didn't do that maliciously, didn't see the course and was just like, nah, I'm gonna switch my prize. I don't want this one. Gets nervous and like, I, don't, I, gotta, I gotta, I gotta get the car here off the prize cards. Uh, uh, goes for the first one that's the course and is like, uh, no. What if it's the other one's the car? Okay, I'll take the other one and goes and grabs the other one, right? So like, but you can only give a player so much leniency, even if you think they're like to to say that they're not cheating. So in this situation, even if Oliver didn't do anything malicious and didn't cheat here. The judges definitely made the right call in DQing him because it look it looks so bad. It's just on Oliver to not make anything look to make anything look terrible, right? Like if you just like if you like aren't cheating but make it look like you're cheating as much as you possibly can throughout a, throughout a game, like you can't just like do that and then expect to like not get any kind of penalties, right? Like you have to not only play clean but play in a way that shows that you're like seem to be playing clean, right? That's why drawing your prize cards out of order in general is is silly and sus because you just look like you're potentially cheating. That's why you just shouldn't draw your prize cards out of logical order because then you just look like you're cheating. And that's the same thing here with Oliver, right? Maybe Oliver didn't see the chorus and just like snapped aside to change the prize card they took, but it just looks too much like cheating. So at that point, you just need to get DQ'd. So you can, it's not just about playing clean. You also have to play in a way that makes it look like you're playing clean because um, otherwise you're just sus and it looks like you're cheating. And if it goes too far, it's like reasonable for you to be DQ'd even if you didn't actually do anything. Um, so yeah, then Oliver, you know, switches it up, grabs the Clara, and 
takes the Clara. And then, I mean, it just looks so bad at that point. And to be honest, yeah, I actually don't know for sure. Having rewatched this multiple times now, kind of talked about it with other people, thought about it. Um, and now watching it again here, you can't like you can't really tell for sure if Oliver saw the chorus or not. Um, and Oliver did put out a statement, which we can take a look at as well. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's a lot. There's a lot of words and like reading is not my forte. So, um, but the one thing that I found really weird about this whole uh statement here from oliver though was like this part here where where oliver's basically just like i played heavy ball i asked the judges to shuffle my prize cards for me which i think is fine i don't think there's anything wrong with asking the judge to shuffle the prize cards for you when you use the heavy ball i think that's like fine uh you just keep the game moving you know just ask the judge to do it and put them out um but the, the judge didn't understand what oliver said and instead of shuffling the prize cards the judges laid them out for oliver again which the judge took them and laid them out in reverse order. Um, so basically, this is what the prize cards looked like before the judge picked them up. And then if you go... And then they ended up in reverse order. So it was Chorus on top, Clara, then... Uh, oh, wait, actually not quite reverse order because it would be Chorus, Clara, Nestball, Trek, and Juice. So they did get met, mixed up a little bit here. Oh, no, no, but from, from the hand that Oliver has them in, once Oliver hands them over to the judge, it does become uh, Clara, close or furthest from him, then Chorus, uh... No, but then the trekking shoes ends up Clara, Chorus, Trekking Shoes. Yeah, yeah. And then Trekking Shoes, Nest Ball, and then the first two prize cards drawn were Vacuum Recycler. So, like, Oliver makes this whole statement about this, but this doesn't mean... I don't know why. I, I thought at the end of this, I thought at the end of this whole thing that Oliver wrote out about how they used Heavy Ball, the cards didn't get shuffled, and then... um. Theoretically, Oliver, once Oliver drew the first two prize cards, if Oliver had been paying attention that closely to the order of the cards, Oliver could have known exactly where Clara and every other prize card was. So I thought at the end of this, Oliver was going to be like, and that's why I, I snap chose to take the Clara over the course because I knew the Clara was there the whole time. Because I once I had played the heavy ball, I realized the judge hadn't shuffled the heavy ball, uh, shuffled my heavy ball peak and put them back down. So I knew where the Clara was the whole time. And that's why I snap chose Clara over chorus. Uh, but they did, at the end of that, they didn't say that. They just, like, didn't say anything. I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, wh what is this? I just don't get the point of saying all this. It's, like, preemptive defense uh, for people potentially calling them out for the heavy ball shuffle not being shuffled, I guess. Like, that's, like, I just didn't get the point of, of this whole thing being said here. I don't know. <laughs> like, I just don't get it. Um, and at the end of it all, they say the Clara versus Colrus. Um, uh, let me see if it's, the, if it's right here where I wanted to find the last thing. Um, they say they say it definitely looks terrible, and them getting the DQ is like very reasonable. Um, the fact that they got DQ'd is very reasonable. Um, the incident in question starts at 4:13 on the VOD. I went to take my fourth prize card, which was the Nest Ball, uh, left in the same sequence thanks to so you can heavy ball from 15 minutes prior. Like I said, I don't understand why they're like making like that such a making that so clear. And seeing it caused my heart to race, knowing how important getting Clara from this fifth prize was. As someone who's uh, neurodivergent, ASD, uh, and has had difficulty with my nerves on stage in the past, as I went to grab the second prize card in a split second decision, I changed my mind and took the other prize card. Um, so they're just saying, like, they went to go take the uh, Colrus, and they were like, uh, but what if it's not the Clara? What if the other one's the Clara? And they were like, okay, I'm just gonna go take Clara. Uh, let me be clear right now. This is not justifying this decision. This was my dumb, stupid, and irrational decision that makes no logical sense. Okay, they're saying they didn't do it knowing Clara was there and that it was a stupid decision, but they still just made it anyways because like the their emotions got the better of them in that situation. The odds were exactly the same between the Colrus and the Clara being there, and by all reasonable per, uh, perspectives, I should have continued to grab the prize cards I was originally taking. Um, I swear I had no idea that the first card was Colrus. I did not see the reflection of the card nor anything else while initially grabbing it. Uh, after round, uh, after around three seconds of going to take it, I took the other card. Yeah, I was like kind of, it's just like... It just makes no sense. And it, just, it makes them look so bad. You can't really not DQ them over it. But to be honest, I actually, um, after watching it and then like hearing their statement, like, I don't think it's completely irrational to assume that they, um, that they weren't cheating here, to be honest. Like, I don't know for sure. I think it's definitely reasonable they got DQ'd, but if they don't get banned, then I don't think that's completely unreasonable, to be honest. It's, it's like hard to tell for sure. I can't tell for sure. Because I don't want to say for someone's... I don't... Like, I'm definitely 100% down to say Edder is a cheater. And I hope Edder gets permabanned. But I'm not... I'm not... Uh, you know, with... I don't have enough certainty to say that about Oliver in this situation for sure. So I'm not going to say it. Um, there was one more thing I wanted to make note of. Oh, yeah. Like... And it definitely happens, right? The whole, like... Playing on stage is very jarring compared to playing at a normal table. 
A great example of this is was me up against um, Cameron at OCIC was a great example of that, where Cameron drew from their deck instead of a prize card because the judges make, made Cameron play left-handed, which they shouldn't have done. They shouldn't have made pl uh, Cameron play left-handed. Um, and I had a similar, similar situation in the past myself where they forced, when they forced me to play left-handed with how I laid out my prize. So I like to draw my prize cards the exact same way every single game. I go, uh, I lay them out, uh, one, two, one, two, one, two. And then I draw them one, two, one, two, one, two. I lay my prize cards out the exact same way every single game. And I pick them up the exact same way every game. So a couple times that I've been on stream, um, they, they made me play left hand. I forget what it was. It wasn't any of the ones recently because they've made the tables better recently, but they made me play left-handed or something. And then when I laid out my prize cards, um, I laid them out kind of opposite of how I would draw them. And if you had like a camera, like if you had a camera like watching me from above as I took my prize card, do you think it was super sus? Because I would go to draw a prize card and be like, no, that's not the prize card I normally draw. I'm going to draw the one over from that because that's how I normally draw my prize card. So this was like back in 20, this might've been pre COVID, honestly, when the tables were like super messed up and they forced people, like the tables were like really, really janky. Um, but basically like, I always like laying out my prize cards the exact same way and drawing them the exact same way. But when they made me play on stream a couple times, I didn't think it was pre COVID. Um, I, it was like, I instinctively laid out my prize cards weird. And then when I went to draw them, I corrected myself and wanted to draw my prize cards the exact same way I draw them every single time. So I went to like go draw a prize card. And I was like, wait, that's not the, that's not the prize card I usually draw first. It's this one. So I would, I corrected myself and drew a different one. It didn't look at all as bad as what Oliver did. Um, Cause I just like put my hand on it. And then I was like, no, the other one, or I put my hand over it like to reach for one. I was like, no, that's not the correct one that I usually draw usually. And I put my hand over to the, the other prize card. Cause I was like, this is the one I draw. Cause I just like, I would get, otherwise I would get in my own head about not drawing my prize cards in the exact same order as I usually do. And then that would like mentally mess me up if I like got like a terrible prize card. Um, so like if I just draw them the same order every time, even if I get a bad prize card, it doesn't matter. Cause I drew my same, I would, I would be drawing my prize cards the exact same way I do every single time. Like I even drew my prize cards awkward or off at uh one of the uh it's because my dude this is something actually it kind of tilts me is when my opponent lays out my prize cards after i use heavy ball uh when i'm like not noticing it's on me it's not on my opponent but it does tilt me because it it switches up the order of my prize cards and and it overlaps the prize cards in the way they're not supposed to be overlapped so if i lay them out like how i do and i go one two they would lap like this but then when my opponent lays them out for me back off my heavy ball they lap them like this and that tilts me um or not like this like this this tilts me. I want them laid out like this, and my opponent lays them out like this. And then the one I usually draw is on the top, and the one I usually don't draw is on the top instead of the bottom. So like, and now whenever I give my opponent my my prizes to cut off heavy ball, I always make sure I'm the one that lays them back out because otherwise, it, when I go to draw a prize card, it throws me off that they're not laid out the way that I normally have them laid out to draw them. So, <laughs> and it's it's not like a is it superstitious. It's not superstitious. It just throws me off when I go to draw a prize card. It's not where it's supposed to be. Um, so I don't know. I'm like, I'm like very like, what's it called about that? Like, I just like, I want everything to be the exact same way every single time. Um, anything that I have control over, I want to be the exact same way every single time I play a game of Pokemon. So prize cards, I, I've now switched. I used to always call uh, superstition. No, but I don't think it changes the outcome of the game. I don't think it changes the outcome of the game. I just like it, it like, it, it just throws you off. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Like, it's like if someone turned your deck instead of your deck being north, south or putting your discard pile above your deck. Like if someone like if someone was like all of a sudden like no you have to play with your discard pile above your deck for like no reason, right? It would just throw you off. It just throws you off. It's not superstitious. Like I don't think it's gonna change the outcome of the game, but it would throw you off if your discard pile was above your deck every game. Or like all of a sudden, just like the next time you went to play in a Pokemon tournament, it just throws you off. So I don't want those things to throw me off. Throws off muscle memory exactly, and that's why when I played against Cameron Shinoy at OCIC, that's why he went to draw a card off his deck instead of his prize cards because his prize cards are usually where his deck is, and his deck was where his prize cards usually are. So he didn't even think about it. He wasn't cheating. He just went to go. Oh, I got to go get a card from the left side of the table, and then he went to reach for a card from the left side of the table, and it wasn't his prize cards. It was his deck, right? So like, it's just like it's yeah, it's it's, it's not about superstition. That's different. That's hundred percent different because that that means you think that what you do will change the outcome. It just throws you off. It's just like yeah, it's just habit. Um, I play so much Pokemon so often that it definitely messes me up when it's not in correct order. So now whenever I use Heavy Ball and my opponent cuts my deck, I make sure I get the cards back and I lay them out myself because otherwise it just throws me off. Um, <clears throat> if your opponent sets your prize cards physically in the same location... No, but they're, but the six prize cards are in a different location. than they, they're, they're ordered differently than they should be. Um, it would be like if you turned your deck... It's like if your deck's in the same location, but someone turns it... Uh, uh, east west instead of south north it's like that would throw you off when you go to draw a card for sure you get thrown off like every time you went to go draw a card it would throw you off the order shouldn't matter but it does because the card closest to me should be laid on top of the card further away from me repeated up to the top 
It just, it just does throw me off. Um, so yeah, whenever I play heavy ball, I just need to make sure I get it right on my side. And that's actually why I've switched. Did I already say this? I think I said this. But that's why I've switched to me being the person that rolls the die. Like, I just want everything to be as consistently the same every single time. And it doesn't, like, it doesn't, like, end, like, I'm not going to be on tilt if, if my opponent asks, it gets to the coin first and asks me if I want heads or tails. But I also think, like, yeah, it's just, like, I like to be the one who flips the coin now. I actually didn't flip the coin for, like, 10 years, more than that, until this season. And then I was at the end, in the middle of this season, I was, like, well, if I'm trying to be as consistent as, replicate the consistency of a game state as consistently as possible, game to game, and not having to deal with my stuff like my opponents not knowing how to roll a die or flip a coin, because I hate it when people flip coins, then I should just be the person who rolls the die. So now immediately when I sit down to play against someone, I just roll the coin. I just immediately, I'm like, heads or tails. Like, I don't even give them a chance to take their deck out of their bag. I'm just like, heads or tails. Because I, I just like, it just increases, like, I don't want to see, I don't want my opponent to whip out their coin and be like, heads or tails. Coins tilt me. Um, and then people not knowing how to roll dice also tilts me. So I make sure I'm the person who rolls the die uh, going into a match. I just, and I and I like roll like I, I like I know how to roll a die, so like I'm not worried about it. I do double hand cup, die in the hand, shake it, drop it, whatever. Um, I because I had to tell two people at I had to tell two people at um, at Hartford that they had to roll better next time they rolled. I didn't. I don't like to like. And they both got like the fortunate outcome of the roll on their first roll, but it feels weird to like ask your opponent to roll again after they get their the outcome they desired off their roll. So I never tell my opponent they have to roll again in that situation. But if they roll poorly, even if they get the negative outcome, um, or even if they get the fortunate outcome, I never tell them to re-roll. I always just say next time you roll, you have to roll better than that. Like, yeah, I would just tell them they have to roll better than that on the next roll. Because like you just do. Like if the, if your roll literally rolls once and slides across the table, which is usually what the problem is, when people roll, they do it like this they like throw it across the table like this um and it just like turns once and slides like that's not it's not a roll <laughs> like so you got to do better than that so um yeah now i now i'm the one who rolls the opening the opening flip 